Okay, we're now starting chapter seven on motor control and reinforcement learning. We'll start as usual with an overview of the biology. Uh, this was really covered a lot in the brain areas chapter, chapter five. So we'll go relatively quickly through here and you can look back at that, those lecture slides for more details. In motor control, the brain has specialized two really core basic primitive systems the basal ganglia and the cerebellum that each respond to two basic forms of learning, reward and error. These two sources of learning encompass what you need for core survival in the physical world. You need to be able to learn what is a good action and a bad action, and you need to be able to refine your motor programs so that you make uh, motor control actually work in a kind of sensory motor way. And then the more advanced systems, the hippocampus and neocortex come later. They're more developed in mammals and that's what we're going to be talking about later. But in this chapter, we certainly focus on these primitive basic systems, the basal ganglia and the cerebellum. Everybody thinks about basal ganglia and cerebellum as motor control systems. But in fact, I think it's more accurate to say that basal ganglia is a decision-making and reinforcement learning system. It's fundamentally about deciding what you want to do. And so at some level, that's motor control. But interestingly, these two systems don't actually interact that much at a neural level. In fact, they have very little shared connectivity, and they really deal with different time scales of motor behavior. The cerebellum is much more fine-grained, fast-paced, uh, about 10 millisecond kind of time scale, very fast coordinated movement. So it's really a motor control system in the way that you would normally think of that. Um, and if you think about like what's happening with a robot, um, all the stuff about actually moving your limbs and coordinating with that with sensory, the sensory environment and being able to be kind of efficient and effective in motor control, those aspects are really the domain of the cerebellum. And interestingly, I think what people can do, what other animals can do in the domain of motor control is actually far more robust, fast, efficient, adaptive than what we see in current day robotics. So I think there's still a lot that roboticists can learn uh, from the cerebellum. And as we said in earlier chapters in learning, that we think that uh, predictive learning in particular is uh, supported by the cerebellum and by the cortex and perhaps by understanding more about how those predictive learning mechanisms work, uh, we can gain a, a better understanding about how motor control functions in the cerebellum. So cerebellum is really this kind of core motor control system, whereas the basal ganglia is this higher level outer loop kind of, what should I do? Should I go over there and forage in that bush or should I be worried about a predator? You know, just these kind of very high level issues having to deal with what are you going to get what you want and how are you going to avoid not getting eaten so um, so that's really these two different domains and two different time scales and two different forms of learning both of these systems however operate using what we described as a kind of separator dynamics when we talked about this in the learning chapter and this is this idea that you take the information that you're learning and kind of memorize each particular case by separating it out and encoding it in different patterns of neural activity. And so these are two different ways of thinking about this. Here we have a simple kind of function approximation that we're trying to do. We have an x-axis, some values that's going across the x-axis that could be you know, position of my limb. Uh, and in fact, in, in, in general, in motor control, this is very high dimensional. So it's like the sensory world all the data about where my arm is, everything. So it's very high dimensional, but we can just for simplicity, think about that as a single axis. And then the function of X is really, what do we need to do in, in generating motor control commands for any given particular input situation? And F of X is the motor command, X is the uh, kind of current configuration. And essentially what the cerebellum does is memorizes for each different possible configuration of my motor system, what the right motor command is. And so essentially, you can think about this as a lookup table. 
where you kind of look up for every given situation what the right response is. And a lookup table like this learn any function. So if the function of kind of motor control commands for different situations is complex as it's as it is kind of shown here, nonlinear, uh, you know, maybe rapidly changing in certain areas, you could try to do some kind of you know more fancy function approximation to fit that curve. But by far the simplest, most robust way to, to learn this information is just to memorize it and then perhaps to uh, interpolate between the data points that you've memorized to give some kind of smoothness to the overall function. And that's a pretty good assumption about what's happening in the cerebellum and it turns out also in the hippocampus as we'll look at in the memory chapter. With the basal ganglia, maybe not quite as much to the same extent, but in the cerebellum, the idea is that you know you really have two different situations, two different patterns of uh, activity in terms of sensory inputs coming in, and those may be very similar as you can see here in this A and B pattern, but the job of the cerebellum is to kind of separate those out and encode them using different individual neurons that essentially the neurons are memorizing the proper value of f of x for every given input configuration.